In the beginning of my freelance career, I made a lot of mistakes. And honestly, if I had to redo everything all over again, these would be the things that I would do. Now, if you're a beginner, I highly encourage that you watch this video from the beginning to the end because I probably made a lot more mistakes than a typical beginner videographer would. But let's talk about it. Okay, so mistake number one that I made early on is not selling more of my services. In the beginning of my career, I did a lot of free work. Now, there's nothing wrong with building your portfolio and doing free work. It's good to do free work when you're starting out, but I just did more free work than I should have. A lot of you guys don't know, but I actually have a background in music. I used to be a music engineer before I actually started picking up a camera and getting into the film industry. And with my musical career background, when I was an engineer, I primarily just did engineers for friend songs. I didn't really do anything professional. I didn't really do anything where I was getting paid for it. And honestly, asking people for money can sometimes be quite uncomfortable i didn't really know in the beginning stages of my videography career if i should even be asking people hey can you pay me to film this video for me it was just really awkward i think we are all salesmen as videographers we are trying to not necessarily sell somebody a product but we're trying to sell our services we are trying to provide a service to someone's problem and i think early on in beginning stages for me i just i made a mistake just doing way too many free projects even though i knew at that point i was building a better understanding i was building a better skill set and my portfolio was growing i was just doing way too many free jobs and i feel like as a beginner you shouldn't do that many free jobs it gets to a point where if you have an understanding if you believe in yourself and you know that you can execute the job you shouldn't do it for free number two is something that i wish i definitely would have listened to a lot earlier on and it's saving for the right gear and not cheaping out on cheaper gear. In my early stages, I bought a lot of cheap gear, tripods, audio, and for the longest, I thought that that was a good way to go about video production, but slowly over time, as I started using more and more different types of gear, I realized this cheap stuff is just not even worth the time. It's not even worth the one or two months pleasure that you're gonna get out of it before it ends up breaking on you or potentially breaking your six, five, four thousand dollar camera. Sadly, there was an incident back when I had my Sony A7S III, I believe it was. I bought a cheaper tripod from Amazon and I went to take some photos and they were gonna be vertical photos. So I had the camera on a tripod vertically. The piece that clamps down the base plate that you connect to your camera to the tripod completely just snapped off and my camera went falling. But I had my camera bag at the time laying down right underneath the tripod. So my A7S III, luckily, it fell on the camera bag and nothing broke. Don't cheap out or you're really just going to be buying things twice. That is the whole point. And that's something that I wish I would have not done a long time ago. And now I have a lot of gear that just stores up that I don't even use because I cheaped out on it. Number three is going to be understanding the business side of videography this is something that's very very important because you can be in this industry and not really know too much about the business side and you can make a lot of financial mistakes there's just so much that goes into the business side of this industry that a lot of beginners or people like myself in the early stages just neglected i just picked up a camera and just wanted to shoot but there's more to that if you want to make some money out of this career. And I think really going over and studying the business side and talking to more videographers, not only about camera gears, but about the business side, I really wish that I would have took the time to better understand it and better learn it. I think I could have avoided a lot of financial mistakes early on if I would have took that route. Number four is going to have to be, I wish I would have rented more gear. Now, again, back then I didn't really know that you could rent gear out. If I did, I probably would have went that route. And for me, I sadly made the mistake of not renting anything. I just, whenever I seen a piece of gear that I think I would want and I think I might use it, I just went out and bought it and tested it out like that. Let me tell you, there is so much gear that I bought thinking that I would like and I end up not liking and now I have no use for it. And even if I try to resell it, I just took a big significant loss because I'm not getting my money back. And even now I find myself renting out pretty much everything. I hardly buy anything anymore unless I know that I'm going to use it all the time. You can pretty much rent out 
any piece of filmmaking gear that you want. It's to the point now where these rental shops pretty much have everything that you would possibly want. All right, the next one, I don't know what number I'm on, but it's going to be taking the time to learn from people who are farther along head than I am. I know here on YouTube, we watch a lot of videos of creators saying, just go pick up a camera and start today. Just go do that. And though I do agree with that and you should start today, there's nothing wrong with that. But I also think that if you have the option to pick up a camera and film with someone who is more experienced than you rather than doing it on your own i feel like you should go that route do it with someone who can guide you and be a, a deacon essentially to you be that leader to help you and guide you and teach you for me i personally feel like if i had the option to take that route i would have and I think that if you as well have that option, you should consider taking that route. Number six is going to be don't really focus too much on what other people are doing. I wish I would have told myself that personally a long time ago because I found myself just watching videos after videos after videos comparing my work to someone else's. Though I do not think that that's a bad approach all the time. See, because for me, Watching these amazing films that we're able to see on YouTube, it can go both ways. It can either really motivate you or it can just put you into a deep depression because you're a beginner and you're thinking that you're never going to get to that level. Or maybe you have been doing this for two or three, four years and you still feel like you're not at that level. But then again, you can just watch these videos and be like, wow, that's really amazing. I'm gonna go out there and go create something just like that. So it works, you know, in both ways. You have to find the right balance in between how much you're consuming and how much you're letting consume you. Number seven and my last point is going to be to never forget why you picked up a camera in the first place. I feel like in this industry that we are in, we as creators get so consumed with gear, work, business inquiries, all this different assets and different things that we like or need or enjoy that we get so overwhelmed and we forget why we even picked up a camera in the first place. Now, I'm not saying don't worry about where your next client is going to come from because we're all going to worry whether or not if we're going to land a client this month or not. But just don't forget and don't let it take the joy on why you even picked up a camera in the first place don't get too overwhelmed don't get too stressed go out there pick up your camera and remember why you chose this career path in the first place that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that you learned something if you did please leave a like comment and subscribe almost to a thousand subscribers thank you all for watching thank you all for who've been watching my channel since the very beginning and i'm gonna see you in the next one i'll be on to bon